Well, hey everyone, Jason here at Alorium Technology. In this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how we can take one of our snowboards based on the Intel Max 10 FPGA, and we're gonna put it inside of this little enclosure, and we're gonna power it with Power Rover Ethernet, and then we're gonna use it to do closed loop PID control on three DC motors. Now we've got a separate module that we'll be using to do the actual motor driving, so we can power that separately, of course, but we're gonna do the PID control as well as driving the PWM outputs to control those motors and reading the quadrature data all coming in just through one cable and all being done on a single FPGA. Now the reason that this is important is because we have talked quite a bit in the past about how FPGAs are great for doing things where you need really tight resolution on your outputs, such as driving PWMs, or when you're reading data in, just like reading quadrature data coming off from motors. And we've done videos like that in the past and you can go check those out on our YouTube channel. But this video is going to incorporate both of those things and add the element of parallelism to show that we can do that on three motors at the same time. In addition, we're gonna be feeding all of that data into a PID module that's running on the FPGA as well and really hardly even use the small 8-bit microcontroller that we've got on board that FPGA. So let's jump into it and show you what this looks like. Let's start by taking a look at the dashboard itself. Now you can see it's got three rows of fairly similar looking graphs and information and they're arranged in columns from left to right for motors 0, 1, and 2, which is how the motors are numbered if you look at them in the video down below. Now the first graph you'll see is a gauge of the RPM, that's the data being read from the quadrature encoder, and then we're also sending the PWM duty cycle. And then the graph below that is showing you the RPM versus the PWM. So in the case of motor 0, we're running at right around 3,300, somewhere in there, and the PWM is at 67%. We're gonna focus on this row that shows the RPM values versus the PWM duty cycle because I wanna be able to demonstrate the PID in action. And what the PID control is, the control loop is doing is keeping these motors at a fixed RPM value. And we've configured that RPM down below in the dashboard as we looked at, and now it's gonna to attempt to keep it the same way, and I'm gonna apply some pressure to the spinning disks that are on the end of these motors and see if it can keep those RPM values where they're supposed to be. And let's start with motor zero. All I'm gonna simply do here is just use my finger to apply a little bit of pressure to this motor. And what we'll see as soon as I press down on this like this, right away we'll see a little dip in the RPM value, the green line on that graph. But as soon as that happens, we see the, the duty cycle spike up a little bit to try to compensate for that and keep that RPM at a fixed speed. Now, of course, as soon as I let go or I pull my finger off, things will start to equalize back out, drop to where they should be, and you'll see things kind of return to the state they were at before I was applying my, my pressure. So the PWM duty cycle drops, the RPM settles out there where it was before, and everything is kind of at a steady state again. Of course, we can do this with motor two as well. This will work for all three of the motors, obviously. So if I apply some pressure here, now we'll see in that center graph, the, the RPM, same kind of thing. You'll see a little fluctuation. If I let go real quickly, it drops right back down. Now, the cool thing here is these are happening in parallel, which means we can do these all at the same time, right? It doesn't matter how many motors we had going. If I pressure, add pressure to two motors at the same time, like I'm doing now, we can see the effect that that's happening. And we're running right now with just these three, but honestly, we could very easily scale this up to easily eight with just our snowboard and probably nine if we want to take advantage of a couple of the signals that we currently have set aside for analog or something like that. We can just do as many of these as we want to, honestly. Uh, right now, we're really just I.O. limited, and we'd eventually run out of some space on the FPGA if we kept adding these uh, you know, additional channels. But it really gives us a lot of flexibility to be able to do a lot of things. So I hope this provides a good view into a great application for FPGAs because you need that very precise PWM output in addition to being able to read in the quadrature data at high speed and be able to do that in a parallel manner without even bothering to interrupt a processor, all of it's done in hardware, be able to feed all that data into that PID control loop to be able to decide what we need to do and what needs to be sent out to the PWM and control those speeds for the motors to maintain that consistent RPM. All of that being done in hardware with very minimal impact to that small 8-bit micro that's running on there. And honestly, right now, as I said before, we could do up to eight of these motors very easily with just our single snowboard. And if we just wanted to move to a slightly larger FPGA or add more IO, you could do many, many more than that in very great application of FPGA hardware. If you are interested in this or this catches your eye in any way, 
please go out to our website, go out to loriumtech.com slash snow if you want to learn more about the snowboard, or go out to loriumtech.com slash fusion if you want to learn about how we can assist you with developing something like this for your application, for your end product. We would love to work with you to make that happen. Thanks again for watching. We'll talk to you soon.